These days, 5G is more confusing than ever. What is it? How do I use it? How do we design with it in mind? Sure, everyone is talking about it these days, but if you ask an average engineer, how would you get started with a 5G design? They'll probably give you that deer in the headlights look. Uh, well, I would, um, I mean, well, <laughs> sure, the moving parts of 5G are moving faster and faster these days. But how do you get on board? Is there a way to get started with your next 5G design that includes an RF front end? Because you really don't want to design that yourself, do you? The power and programmability of an FPGA-based system? And maybe even a little MATLAB thrown in to help you get on your way quickly? Uh, yes. Actually, there is. And guess what? I've got just the solution for you. Yeah, I know. I'm nice like that. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, Matthew Brown from Avnet and Matthew Burns from Samtech are bringing the goods on the Avnet Zinc Ultra Scale Plus RF SOC Development Kit. We're chatting about all the bits, bobs, and SDR that this super cool new 5G development kit contains. So if you're ready, we best get started. We've got quite a bit of 5G ground to cover. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about the Avnet Zinc Ultrascale Plus RFSOC development kit. Hi, Matt Burns. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be with you again, Amelia. And hi, Matt Brown. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Great to be here. Okay, so we're hearing a lot about 5G these days, but to really get started on a 5G design, what kind of things do we need to consider? 5G seems to be all the rage. Everywhere we go, we hear information about this emerging technology that's going to revolutionize the world. From Samtech and Avnet's perspective, the requirements of 5G deployment impose high-dense equipment, bringing challenges in connecting modular RF systems, both from a hardware perspective and from a software perspective. Avnet has done a really good job to enable prototypes of these systems using industry-leading technology from Xilinx, which is based on their new Zinc RF SoC technology, and interconnect solutions from Samtech based on our LP array solutions. Samtech also has a comprehensive portfolio of interconnect that supports 5G modular, digital, and hybrid beamforming connectivity. Okay, and there are some specific RF challenges we're looking at when it comes to 5G, right? Yes, one of the core emerging technologies of the new 5G standard is millimeter wave technology. What that's enabling is carrier frequencies ranging from 30 gigahertz all the way up to 300 gigahertz. So capturing those signals, transferring those signals, passing them through the system provides fidelity requirements throughout the system. This is especially true on the data converters, both the ADCs and the DACs, and it also requires highly skilled and careful PCB modeling and design. One of the approaches to design that's making this easier is a modular approach, both on front ends and application requirements. Adaptability throughout the system really eases system design. Additionally, throughout the system, especially when it comes to high frequency signal flow, connectors have to be implemented judiciously and include highly accurate models for simulating not only the system level link budget, but also signal integrity at the PCB level. Okay, so just like the title said, there's a new development kit especially designed for this space, correct? What's all included? Yeah, Avnet set out with this kit to make it easier for the designer right out of the box to evaluate this new technology. Matt Burns alluded to RFSOC, which is kind of a first of its class in the industry. But to get started, a development kit is really the best place to start evaluating the technology. So what we did is assemble a few different pieces. One is based on the Xilinx Ultrascale RFSOC ZC111. This is a development kit that Samtech worked closely with Xilinx developers on to make sure the best signal integrity was maintained from the data converters on RFSOC right out to the connectors. And so what we did at Avnet is to kind of continue that theme by adding an RF front end using that same connector technology from Samtech to preserve the best signal quality out to this RF lineup. So those are the two hardware pieces, ZC111. There's this front RF front end that we partnered with a company called Corvo to develop. And the third piece is meant to kind of take the software complexity out of the equation. And here we create a front end that allows a designer to interact with the data converters, 
the Corvo RF front end, all from MATLAB. Okay, so tell me more about how this integrates with MATLAB. The very first stage of kind of evaluating this technology, RFSOC and the data converters, is to focus on the data converters themselves. And so as a designer, the very first thing that I want is to be able to get samples into the device and out of the device. And the place that I'm used to doing that kind of analysis work is in MathWorks software, both MATLAB and Simulink. So what we developed was kind of an application, a graphical user interface on the front end that allows you to configure this RF subsystem inside of the RF SOC, but also control the analog front end of the Corvo cards. Now what sits in between here is the Samtech interconnect. And of course, maintaining that signal integrity across this boundary, as I said before, is crucial. We put a lot of work into making sure this Corvo card had the best performance for an RF front end within the LTE band 3, which is 1800 megahertz. So making sure we maintain that signal integrity from data converter to RF front end was critical. Now, data path signals are crucial to these types of applications. What kind of interface are you guys supporting here? So Amelia, we know that you're uh, very familiar with the FMC interface that's ubiquitous across FPGA development platforms throughout the industry. For the ZC111 kit, Xilinx adopted that same model of having an expandable mezzanine or daughter card interface to support these new RF capabilities. So on the ZC111, this is the first board that Xilinx has developed that has their RFMC or RF mezzanine card interface. Specific to the ZC111, this is a dual slot interface that provides access to the ADC and DAC clocking and data signal path for RF signal chain applications. As Matt Brown mentioned, Samtech and Xilinx worked to define this interface. Xilinx chose Samtech's LP array high-speed low-profile technology. On the ZC111, each connector contains 320 I.O. and an 8x40 uh, arrangement, and it comes with a very small stack height of 4 millimeters. That condensed stack height is one of the reasons that this unique solution from Samtech, the LP array technology, was a key fit on the ZC111 board. As with any connectors, there's a mated set. On the RFMC side, on the ZC111, we use the socket connector, the part number shown here. And on the RFMC daughter cards, we use a terminal connector, which is the male version of the LP array. Okay, Matt, so what's this LP array all about? And what does it buy me as an engineer? Well, one of the things that Samtech really tries to enable is flexibility within our interconnect. So specific to LP array, this high-speed, low-profile, open-pin field technology, any of the pins on the connector can support one of three functions. One is uh, high-speed differential pairs, high-speed referential pairs, or power. You can see the specifications within the graphic to how the connector set performs. We have actually tested LP array to data rates of up to 56 gigabit PAM4. Another benefit of LP array is its extremely small size. It supports 4 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, and 5 millimeter stack heights. Currently, the product supports up to 320 I.O. As we mentioned on the ZC111, Xilinx chose the largest solution. We do have other larger pin counts in design right now. It's a very flexible architecture. There's four, six, and eight row designs. It's on a small pitch, 1.27 millimeter. The dual beam contact system makes it very rugged. The solder crimp termination eases processing when manufacturing. Okay, Matt, I'm not a connector expert, although I probably should be at this point. But what kind of support does Samtech offer here? That's a great question, Amelia. Many of our customers ask us that all the time. What we're finding as performance increases, not only from a data rate standpoint, but from a precision standpoint, Samtech has to offer more and more services to enable the performance that customers like Xilinx are looking for. Very simply, we offer mechanical samples, usually available within 24 hours for our most popular products. We offer downloadable MCAD files in over 150 formats to enable system design, engaging the connector with the PCB designers. We also offer a variety of standard ECAD files, whether that's schematic symbols, PCB footprints, or PCB libraries. As with high performance, high frequency, high data rate examples like the ZC111, Samtech also offers connector modeling and simulation files such as S-parameters and HFSS files. We'll detail that in just a moment. Our signal integrity experts are available to provide PCB layout reviews or actually to lay out PCB for customers on a consulting basis. We also offer industry-leading technical support via our applications engineers and our field applications engineers. Another area where we've invested lots of efforts to enable high-speed design are SI characterization kits. Information is available about that at samtech.com kits. 
Lastly, SamTech has a team of highly trained signal integrity specialists located around the world who enable our customers to design in high speed, high performance, high data rate interconnect. They can be reached via email at sig at samtech.com. Okay, I'm on board. But Matt Brown, let's put the pedal to the metal here. What from that list did Avnet use in this new kit? Well, for Avnet, I think one of the most exciting things for us about working with Samtech is they're always pushing the edge of technology. So they have sophisticated design tools and analysis tools. One of them happens to be in the category of 3D solver models. And look, when you're talking about RFSOC, you've got data converters that are running at 6.4 giga samples per second. That's at the DAC and 4 giga samples per second at the ADC. The analog bandwidth extends beyond the first Nyquist zone. So you're even into higher frequency ranges than that. To be successful with designs like this, at this high performance, modeling has to be done at the PCB level. And so the fact that Samtex provides 3D solver models and performance models for all their connectors was critical for us as we designed a daughter card to mate with the ZC111. Okay, so walk me through the signal flow. What exactly does that look like? It's more complex than you'd think, Amelia. In most cases, we are asked to look at the performance of the connector just at the mated connector set. However, to optimize the signal flow, to optimize the signal integrity of the entire channel, we have to look at everything holistically. So the graphic here shows the nine variables that we actually look at to optimize the performance of any interconnect system. We look at the transmitter or the transceiver on the IC, we look at the packaging of the IC, we look at the variables associated with the PCB trace between the IC and the connector. The BOR, or the breakout region, is how do we optimize the signals coming out of the connector. A lot of variables there, especially if we're looking at differential or referential or even power type signals. And then we have the signal flow on the reverse going to the receiver, the connector BOR, the PCB trace, the receiver packaging, and the receiver. When we model the system, when we simulate the system, and when we analyze the system, we do so holistically. What do I mean by that? Well, we model each of these nine variables individually, and then we concatenate those models into a system level model to enable us to provide a system level S parameter file that our customers can use for their system design. Okay, so Matt Burns talked about S parameters, but how did you guys use them? That's a great question, Amelia. If you look at the 5G spec, though we reuse some of the LTE existing spectrum, which extends up to six gigahertz, there will also be a new piece of spectrum that goes from 24 up to 60 gigahertz. So you're in the millimeter wave range when you're talking about this. So when it comes down to board design and component level decisions, you're no longer talking about what's the voltage, what's the current. You're looking for discontinuities and mesh impedances. So the important thing about what Samtech has is, Matt just mentioned these, are S parameters for these high performance connectors. And we use these directly to do our RF link budget analysis. We happen to use a tool from the MathWorks called their RF Budget Analyzer and allows us to import the Samtech S parameters directly into our models, pull those together with our whole signal chain, and from a whole system standpoint, look at the gain, the noise figure, IP3 of all the cascaded RF elements. So for us, that's critical to look at the end-to-end -end performance of the signal chain, and having S parameters was critical. S parameters allowed us to design at the board level and be successful with early prototypes. Once you move out into the application level, it's also really important to be able to simulate the entire system, not just the front end, but also right into the data converters and into the FPGA fabric that sits inside of RFSOC. And that's another thing that the RFSOC Explorer that we designed allows an engineer to do, is to sit down right out of the box, do the upfront work of characterizing the data converters, but then also be able to generate 5G waveforms, send those into the digital to analog converter of RFSOC, and then capture that in loopback, either over the air or over coax, back in through that Corvo front end to do kind of a full system antenna to digital testing. Okay, cool. Can you summarize your main points for me? There are four key points, Amelia, that would like your listeners to take away. Avnet, Xilinx, and Samtech have worked exhaustively to provide the necessary tools for next-gen 5G application design around the Xilinx Zinc RFSOC, the ZC111 development kit, the Avnet RFSOC kit, and our high-performance interconnect. Another takeaway is that when looking at modular design, connectors are a key part of the signal flow. High-performance interconnect selection demands state-of-the-art simulation, modeling, and analysis, as we've shown through the Chalk Talk today. Samtech Signal Integrity Group stands ready to assist any customer 
with their high performance, high speed, or high frequency designs, and they can be reached at sig at samtech.com. And Avnet is super excited to launch the Avnet Zinc Ultrascale Plus RFSOC development kit. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Matt Burns and Matt Brown. Thank you, Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about the Avnet Zinc Ultrascale Plus RF SOC development kit. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.